This is James Holder for IFL TV. I'm in the Pro SW gym today in Loughton. Just bumped into <coughs> professional boxer Lenny Dawes. How are we doing, Len? Well, good, mate. And nice also, to see you. Man like Ian Burbage. How are we doing, sir? Yeah, good, thank you, mate. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. A uh, bit of sparring today with Richard Comey. Uh, first session back for yourself as well, Len. How did you find today? Yeah, good, good eight rounds there. Um, he's very strong, busy. Um, just what I need, you know, it's going to bring me on great. Uh, we haven't got an opponent yet, but yes, yeah, get as many rounds in as we can, and you know, it's going to switch me on and help me out, so it was good. Last fight out against Arik Malik. Um, very impressive win for yourself in the way you conducted yourself and boxed. You must be happy with that. Yeah, I felt comfortable in there. Uh, going through the gears and, you know, what we've been working on in the gym with Ian, and uh, yeah, I felt comfortable, nice and fit. The shots were flowing nicely, so we're ready now. We're ready, yeah, to, to move on and. Uh, we're looking to be out in four weeks' time, the 10th, 10th of May or the 17th. We're just waiting for confirmation this week. And uh, yeah, so we just say it's, it's just bang on the sparring now and we'll be ready. Having spoke to Mick, Mick Hennessy a couple of weeks ago, he said to me a couple, couple of fights just to get you out and get you back in the groove. Then he's looking at some kind of title for yourself. Um, any news on what's going on? Well, that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for confirmation on the, on the title fight. Um, but yeah, this, this one's going to set me up again, we're looking at an eight or a 10 rounder and uh, push on from there, yeah, as you say, then we'll be ready for whatever comes. Ian Burbage, if I could bring you in, sir. Um, it's just at the start of his camp now, how do you assess his fitness? No, it's good, it's good, because Lenny's always fit, you know, that, that was not a problem, and in fact, we've just had a week off um, from the last one, so it was a case of getting back on, you know, getting back in the gym quick, because Mick was chucking his May date at us. So, you know, no, he's fit, he's in good shape, that was the first spa, although it's only about sort of four or five, sort of four weeks since he boxed. So he was always going to be sort of fit and it's just getting that ring sharpness really more than anything else, which we pretty much got today, which is a good test. You know, coming in straight in with someone like Richard Comey, normally we'd look that we'd work with someone different first and then go in with someone like that. But in all fairness, I'm, I see you in the gym how fit and sharp Lenny's been, so it was worth coming over straight away to do this. He's never a pound or so off his fighting weight anyway, is he? <laughs> well, pretty much walks about and what he fights. Walks like. about a 10 stone, yeah. Yeah, I'm comfortable, mate, and it was a, a good workout. And yeah, as you say, I felt nice and fit, and uh, we, we could have probably got another couple of rounds in there, but why, why push it at the moment? It's early days, you know what I mean? I've got to take it a step at a time and step up. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, very nice for him to, to invite us over here for the spas. You've been thinking about avenging that so-called defeat against Michele De Rocco. Is that something that's been going through your mind? I'd love to, mate. I'd love to get him out, out of Italy over here, but I can't see him coming out. Um, I think he's out the 17th of May, isn't it? I think something, something like, something like, like yeah. that. He's, he's really out. I don't know. I don't know what he's what he, what the fight's for yet. Um, but yeah, we've got to wait and see how that plans out. I'd love to have a rematch of him, um, settle the score, but. Yeah, it's out of my hands. We've just got to see, see what happens now, if not go another route. But yeah, the main thing's being busy and uh, just doing the hard graft. So that's, that's, that's what I'm prepared to do. If you did have to have a final eliminator to get another shot here, is that something you're prepared to do? Of course it is, yeah, yeah. Um, as you said, I'd, I'd love to... I'd love to claim, you know, not claim the belt, but I'd love to win the EBU title and that pushes you onto bigger and better things. And uh, yeah, if, if it's one step away, then yeah, I'll do it. You know what I mean? It's... Um, Eliminator after eliminator can you know can get a bit frustrating, but if it's definitely one fight and you're there, then we've got to take it. You know what I mean? So uh, by all means, it's just being busy. It just looks like it's, it's all going to start falling into place for me now. So it's, it's looking good. There was talk about Lenny potentially fighting uh, Bradley Saunders for a final eliminator for the British. Do you, without being rude, do you see that as maybe as a backward step for Lenny, as in terms of he's already had the British a couple of times? I think it'd be disrespectful to Bradley Saunders to say it'd be a backward step. No, I don't step. mean it in terms of that, I just mean in terms of promotion. I don't think, it, put it this way, I don't think he should be going for eliminators, to be honest with you. Um, that's not meaning to push past anyone else that's, that's, in, that's there, but Lenny's been in the top three, five, for the last five, six years. So, you know, why couldn't he be a mandatory? But, you know, that's out of our hands. The, the, you know, we, we'll sort of talk to Mick about stuff like that, but... You know, Mick will pull something off for us. We're really confident in that. But to go for eliminators now, you go for this eliminator, then you've got to go for a final eliminator. Then you're sort of two fights away from fighting for a British. Time they get organised, realistically, you ain't going to fight for the British till next year. And that's if no one gets in your way. What preferred route would you talk to Mick about? What, what way would you like to go in? I would like to keep it international for Lenny's sake. As, as I've said before to you, James, I, I think Lenny's proved that he is of European 
stroke world class. Until you get to world class, you know, until you fight people in the top 15 and that, you know, you can never say, yeah, absolutely world class. But I think we've still got to build off the, the, the great performance in Italy um, and then look for, as I say, even getting a, a path to another shot at the European or even going the international title route. And I think that's the way you should go. Because, as I said, confidence that Lenny got off of that fight needs to be built on and we move forward in that way. Mm. No names in the mix as yet from May, but hopefully a week or so we'll have a confirmation on that fight, on the opponent. Yeah, just wait, it's just waiting. It's just literally we're waiting for Mick to get back. He's been away, so we're waiting for Mick to come back. We're going to sit down with Mick and have a chat with him. Um, he's got a couple of ideas. There's a couple of things in the pipeline that we can't really sort of go into as yet because they're still up in the air a little bit. But as soon as we know, then obviously we, you know, we'll tell you first. Um, but as soon as we know and get confirmation or anything, then we'll start talking about it. But it's just, at the moment, there's a few things Mick's working on. I think he's got two or three things he's trying. Whatever one of the three comes out, will be good. You know, very good for Lenny. Um, and we're just waiting on that getting back to us, really. I feel like I'm in an episode of The Da Vinci Code. He's giving me a lot of answers, but he's not giving me any answers. <laughs> but we ain't got them ourselves. Yeah, you we're know, still if, waiting. If we had them, to be honest with you, I'd love yeah. to. You know, yeah, I ain't turned into Dan Brown yet. But, uh, I respect that. I respect that. <laughs> but, as I say, there's about five of things up in here, and we don't know which one to clutch at yet, mate. So. Yeah, no, I respect that. I respect that. Just coming away from Lenny at the moment, um, Danny Donchev getting a long over win the other day, uh, claiming his love for his mentor Ian Burbage. Talk to me a little bit about that. I'm delighted for him. They're absolutely delighted for him, you know. He, there's times, I mean, Dan could be so much better if he listened and did what he does in the gym. But he's a bit of a free spirit, shall we say, when he gets in there. Um, but no, it's, it's great for him to get a win. And, you know, I, I want it as much for him as anybody else. So, yeah. no, I was really pleased for him. He was great, brilliant. We had a chance of getting him on the channel. He was very excited the other day. Um, very pleased as well. Long overdue. Yeah. Yeah, good for him. I mean, the interview's long overdue, isn't it? I mean, there's, a, there's an episode all by itself. you just got to point the camera at him and he'll carry on, won't he? <laughs> he's great. He's That's great. what I'll get every day. He's great. He's a character. He's a real character. Yeah. He's a real character. But listen, lads, congratulations uh, on getting the day for May. Hopefully, as I said, it's a bit, bit of a mouth-watering fight for you. If not, Mick said there's other stuff coming up. Uh, when you do know what's going on, please let us know. Cause I'll get it out no, we will do, mate, for know. sure. Thank you very much for giving me a bit of time, I appreciate that. Pleasure mate. Thanks Jane.